Hello, and welcome to the Zero to Hired podcast, the show that helps struggling job seekers find a career that's right for you. In every episode, we have one mission, to provide you with unique tips and strategies from leading industry experts that will get you in front of hiring managers. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Zero to Hired podcast. I'm your host this week, Connell Valentine. Now, I know you guys are usually used to seeing John behind the mic, but for this week's episode, I thought I'd steal the spotlight from him just for this one episode because our guest today is a fellow newcomer to Canada, or soon to be a newcomer to Canada. His name is Vinil Chandran. Vinil, welcome to our episode. Thanks a lot, Connell. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Now, a lot of folks must be wondering what is so special about this newcomer to Canada, one out of 300,000 that we're going to get this year. Folks are usually used to listening to uh, subject matter experts in the field of job search strategy. But Vinil, you're no ordinary newcomer to Canada. You actually have done something that a lot of newcomers might feel is near impossible and uh, is actually the newcomer's dream. You actually have a job offer in hand before you land out here. Isn't that right? Yes, Connell, that's absolutely right. But uh, that's a lot of pressure coming right at the start of this podcast straight away. <laughs> no, that, uh, well, so just to understand now, you have no network in Canada uh, when you have this job offer, right? And you're not in the IT industry. Uh, it's not an internal transfer. Uh, this is actually an offer that's coming out of the blue. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. Uh, I made the decision to move to Canada somewhere around uh, October of 2016. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, I started research about Canada as a country and about the whole permanent residency process. Uh, I did apply through Express Entry and did get my ITA in October of 2017. And that's when I started uh, my research into the job market and what I need to do uh, to basically get a job as soon as possible. Well, that's, so that that's, was the start. That's, that's really good. Now, I just want to give our an audience a little bit of a, a background on how we met. So we met over LinkedIn. I connected over to you because we had a common connection. And this common connection that said that you were part of a support group that actually helps uh, newcomers to Canada. And uh, you had stood up and said that to this group that you actually follow the Zero to Hired uh, content on Quora and our blogs and our podcasts. And you obviously applied it better than most folks uh, and actually used that content to steer your, uh, your job search and actually get the job offer. So that's when I reached out to you on LinkedIn and we connected and you sent over an email to me on my request uh, detailing what, are, what is the step-by-step -step process that you took. And I got to tell you, I was getting emotional as I was reading it. Because as I was reading it, I could remember the content that I'd written on it. And then you were nice enough to send me a resume as well that you use. And it is at that point when I opened the resume and saw the Zero to Hire template, that actually broke down into tears. <laughs> it was the proudest moment I have ever had in Zero to Hired, uh, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, of course. <laughs> so, you know, that's really good to hear, and, uh, you know, we at Zero to Hired are really proud of you, Vinil, and I. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to come onto this podcast and share your story with other newcomers to Canada. So let me ask you first, uh, how did you come across Zero to Hired? Well, first of all, thank you for, for that amazing introduction. And it's really overwhelming because when I started on this journey, I never thought I would be in this position. And, you know, actually, uh, I'm sure you have a lot of listeners uh, who are listening to it. So I'm really thankful for you to do this podcast as well. So when I started my journey of how to go about the job search, you know, as everybody does, I look to the internet and... Uh, Quora, Quora.com was one of my major sources of information. And that's when I came across a lot of answers that you had written on uh, to a lot of questions. Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of questions on Quora with 
with the central theme about job search in Canada for a new immigrant. And uh, you had written a lot of answers which made a lot of sense to me. And they were very practical. They were very detail-oriented. And one common theme about your answers was there was always a call to action in, in each one of them. And that's when I came across Zero to Hired. And uh, in fact, I'm not sure if you remember, but I had written you an email about four to five months back uh, when, when, when I came across Zero to Hired. And I had just given you an appreciation email saying what you're doing is amazing and the amount of information in Zero to Hired is enough for somebody to start their job search in Canada. And I use, uh, of course, after that, I did use a lot of the tools as well, uh, which, which are given in Zero to Hired. Of course, you know, we have a lot of free content that's open to a lot of folks and it's practical. They can actually use it uh, in their job search as well. So, uh, so over to you now, Vinil, and let's start to understand uh, a little bit more about yourself. Now, what made you decide to move to Canada in the first place? Well, uh, there are a few obvious reasons, like better quality of life, uh, better uh, and I'm I'm father. You know, so obviously in India or in any country. People look towards the West as having a better future for their children. But there were a few non-obvious ones as well for me personally because outdoors, uh, I love the great outdoors. And what better country uh, than Canada to really explore the great outdoors? I, Being in India, I feel there is a huge lack of work-life balance, uh, which I believe is, is a strength in Canada, which I feel my research. Uh, apart from that, uh, apart from professional reasons, uh, there were a few personal uh, reasons as well. Like I'm a great automobile enthusiast and being in North America is, is really deep if you, if you like automobiles. Uh, these were a combination of the reasons which uh, made me decide to move to Canada. And of course, ease of immigration as well. When you consider other countries so yeah that's, that's start. That's great that's good to hear um, now you are in the industry of uh, uh, for retail store manager is that correct that's right yes. okay so in our earlier communications you had mentioned a step-by-step -step plan that you followed uh, to to get this job offer so just at a high level what was that plan like Sure. So when I started uh, gathering data for my job search, the great thing about Canada is there is a lot of data available about every industry online and it's all free. It's, it's all ours. I did use uh, a few websites like statscan.gc.ca to get information about my particular industry, which is the retail food service industry. And uh, there were there was really uh, a treasure trove of data there. I would like to give you an example of, uh, of you know, some some data here. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did uh, when I did compare uh, data for pre and post, pre and during Christmas of 2017, I saw that the uh, apparel retail grew only by 17 percent, whereas food retail grew by 54 percent year on year. Since I had experience in both both the industries, which is both apparel and food service, I decided to focus on food retail. And I decided to target specific companies based on two factors, which is top line growth, uh, which I got through uh, search on Google and through stats, stats scan, and work culture, which was more of a subjective word of mouth research, uh, which you cannot quantify as of now. That was the first step uh, which I started uh, uh, with. After this, I made a list of uh, which I decided to target. Uh, there were 18 companies, 18 retail companies which I targeted, which had uh, companies like Walmart, Tim Hortons, uh, Pizza Hut, Burger King, McDonald's, and so on and so forth. Well, so, those are some big names. Uh, that's right, that's right. So in, in retail, the bigger the company, more chances 
uh, of growth and more chances of you getting a job. So I'm from the industry. That's these are the companies that I did research on. So that these are the companies I decided to target. And uh, once I did that, I looked at how to get noticed by the hiring managers of these companies. By hiring managers, I don't mean recruiters or HR managers. The uh, basically is the reporting managers who are looking for people uh, who have an open position in their team. The way I did that was uh, uh, looked at a lot of LinkedIn job posts and have which generally have the posters information. If not on LinkedIn, even Indeed has the posters information for that particular job in that particular company. And uh, I did make a list of managers to contact through uh, doing some research on their company website as well, which has uh, most of the companies have their leaders also mentioned in those particular websites and go through them, uh, connect with them on LinkedIn. So I use LinkedIn Premium, which is which is a very underrated uh, feature as per me in in LinkedIn. Uh, the initial connect with with the message, I used it like a sales pitch. Uh, only only difference was the product here was myself or my experience, and I couldn't be afraid about it. I couldn't be afraid of asking a job because that's what uh, I'm sure these people would be getting probably hundred hundreds if not thousands of requests every day or week for, for a job. So how would you stand out uh, amongst these people? So the message was designed to be personal. It was designed to be informal and just communicated my intentions of settling down in Canada permanently and asking permission to connect and to learn about the particular company or industry. Uh, further, if I saw that that particular person had an article uh, share or a blog post regarding that particular industry or that company, I would try to refer that with a point which would genuinely appreciate or something I would like to discuss more about that particular article. Nowhere did I ask for a job uh, because I figured they would be getting a lot of such messages anyway. It's, uh, it's interesting you had mentioned that uh, you had found, uh, you know, when you've gone and did the research on the website, you had found leaders, uh, you had found people on the website who are generally considered, who should be the leaders, like people at a high level. Did you connect with these folks as well, who you found on the website of yes. the... Yes, I did. Uh, oh. My response rate was not so good with, with these people because they are generally uh, at, at a CXO level or a president or a director level people. But I did get a few responses, and uh, but it was generally directing me to the particular person in their team who can answer questions about the particular company or the particular uh, query that I had. And that person would connect with me on a much better way because obviously it's, um, I'm not an external connection. It's been referred. I'm somebody who's been referred to by their CXO or by their director. You know, uh, I was just coaching someone yesterday, and when I had suggested to collect to SV to connect to SVPs and directors, this person was really shocked. Uh, they a lot of people, I would imagine, they have this uh, hesitance to to connect with people right at the top of the organization, and uh, I suppose it's due to you know that a bit of feeling of intimidation. But I always encourage them to do this just as you've done, because as you've seen, when you do get a response, and this is the response that you got was typical, that your contact information is forwarded to someone who reports to them, that person now has got right. a message from the boss. And who's going to ignore a message from the boss? And like you had mentioned, you actually saw a trend over here where your response rates for these this particular kind of trend went up. You actually hit the nail on the head. Uh, I got, in fact, I got all three of my interviews uh, through such responses, through somebody <laughs> who had forwarded my uh, profile or my resume to someone in their team. So you can't ignore your boss if he's sending you uh, something to do. That's really good. And uh, in our earlier communication, 
uh, you had said that you connected with about five or six managers and you had a good rapport with them in, in just a month. So how did you go about getting a good rapport with them? What was your strategy like? So I, I believe the majority of people who responded and whom I did build a rapport uh, did so because I researched a lot about the articles that they had shared on LinkedIn and what their interest was and what problems they were facing. So it's, uh, it's pretty common nowadays for people to build their own brand on LinkedIn and basically look for professional solutions on LinkedIn uh, because it's, it's an open community and anybody and anyone can help you. Uh, so I did start genuine discussions about relevant topics for people who are looking for genuine solutions. For example, uh, one person had shared an article about how to engage young workforce which is, I believe, uh, during my research, I believe is a problem in, in Canada. Young people don't want to get engaged uh, in, 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 a, in my industry, which is, which is food retail, employs a lot of students and young people. And they just don't seem to want to let their phone go because I, I just, they just don't want to seem uh, to let go of their phone and attend customers. Uh, that's a common thread which I found online. So I did share an article with someone who was looking for a solution on how to use techniques uh, to engage young for workforce in casual, down, casual dining outlets. Uh, that person responded and in fact is now working on a handbook on how to engage young people at that particular company through weekly activities. And this discussion was started purely by an article which I shared on someone's uh, timeline. Uh, so that's how you, I build a rapport with people uh, through genuine professional questions and genuine professional help uh, to solutions that they were looking for. And nowhere uh, was I actually mentioning about a job or even asking them. So in other words, before you ask someone for a favor or before you ask someone to do something for you, like giving you a job or considering your, looking at your resume, you offered value first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, why would somebody help me out unless they think I'm adding value to them? Uh, it's, it's, it's human nature. So, but once they believe that I'm a genuine guy and I'm genuinely adding value and I'm trying to help out, of course, uh, uh, another fellow human would, would do that 99 times out of 100. At some point, you know, um, it, it turned into job offers for you. Like the topic of jobs did come up. So, uh, how did you make that transition from being of someone who's offering value to, okay, now you've, you're starting to get the, the, the Skype interviews and uh, you're starting to talk about job. How did that transition over? Sure. So as I mentioned, I did develop a good rapport with uh, six or seven uh, hiring managers in, in, in a few companies. And uh, I do a follow-up message or a follow-up article with them on, on a bi-weekly basis. Even though I didn't have anything to share, I would just start a conversation with them. And what I have realized is people in Canada are really helpful. Uh, unlike, uh, say, India, which is you know, people don't really have the time or the inclination to do small talk uh, on, with someone whom you don't know that well. The moment people realize that I'm a new immigrant who has not yet landed in Canada, they did offer me advice on everything from housing, from, from the weather, uh, to even what, what uh, gear to buy uh, during winters. And inevitably... Did Canada goose come up? Absolutely. <laughs> Canada goose was probably, was probably the number one uh, recommended gear for, uh, for winters by, by a lot of people. Uh, during my conversation. So, yes, so inevitably, uh, the topic of jobs uh, came up as well. And uh, when they did raise the topic of a job and of uh, uh, an income to support my family, uh, I did, I was upfront with them and said, I would appreciate any help that you would be able to give me, uh, considering we are in the same industry. And that opened a lot of doors for me because they would, it was not me who was 
doing my job search alone. I had a team of people doing that job search for me, not just me. So that that's basically how it all started. That that's pretty amazing, and you know what's what's most interesting about that is that they brought it up. You know, you didn't have to say, "Do you have a job for me?" They asked you. what is your plan for your job search and that is always more meaningful when someone asks and someone offers to bring up the conversation of job search first uh and that person has the you know power and authority to to hire you it's always more meaningful coming from the the other way around so that's really good now you know job offers are never given just from text messages alone uh You had mentioned to me that you did three Skype interviews. So, what was that experience like? Well, I had I had never done a Skype interview before, uh, to be <laughs> frank. I had I had taken interviews. I was the interviewer, uh, but I I was never on the other side of the chair. So it was a little nerve wracking because a Skype interview is uh, is is a pretty different experience because. Uh, the questions on my mind uh, were more trivial in in the sense it was like what what do i wear will the internet hold up you know will it uh, is the light okay because uh, you're in front of a camera you know and you you only have that uh, that screen uh, to make an impression on the interview so that these were the trivial questions and of course the bigger ones have i done enough research about the company am i prepared Uh, do i know exactly what is there in the resume that i sent them because each job uh, i would tailor resumes uh, with particular keywords so do i know exactly what what was there in my resume which i sent them? and do i have examples and and numbers to back that up but what i realized is uh, with enough preparation uh, the nerves ease out you know it's just it's, a, it's just the first minute or so that you're nervous but if if you're prepared and you know what you're talking about it generally eases out uh, and it was pretty smooth uh, the interview experience was really good uh, interviewers in canada are professional uh, compared to what i have been through in india very very professional they stick to the point uh, they know uh, what to ask how to ask and uh, what they expect so it was it all in all it was it was a good experience Uh, but initially yes you need to be prepared i think preparation is the key now vinil a lot of our audience is from india and you know from way across the other side of the world what did you notice is different uh with the job interviews that you had done by canadian managers versus india well for for a start there are absolutely no personal questions uh <laughs> generally in india <laughs> generally in in india the uh the interview starts with a lot of personal questions like where are you from uh what's what's your family like what's your family background uh and where do you stay and you know things like that uh but there were no personal questions uh in here uh and i believe the other big big change a big difference that i saw was uh there are a lot of technically relevant questions which indian managers ask uh, which is about the job in particular how more more about how to do something or how questions whereas in canada what i found was there was during my interview experience at least there were more of behavioral questions and situational based questions so in this particular uh, situation what would your response be is which uh, changed so there were a, a lot of questions like that as well uh, so more of situation based behavioral questions than you know direct uh, how related questions and and do you recall any of those behavioral questions can you give us an example of one that was particularly difficult or that stood out there was one interview which uh, which was of course as a unit unit head so it involved in a team of about 45 to 50 people uh, on a daily basis one question asked to me was uh, let's say there is a particular staff member who's been late 3 days a week so what would you do as a manager 
how would you tackle this situation? And uh, let's say there's a meeting scheduled, there's a disciplinary hearing meeting scheduled with this person. And what would you tell them? So uh, I didn't know exactly how to answer that because uh, in India, you would just give them a warning. Uh, first of all, it depends on how late he is. In, uh, timekeeping is not something Indians are known for, at least in India. So, <laughs> so a lot of uh, mistakes are overlooked when it comes to being on time. Uh, so, but I just looked at what I would do as a manager and what I have done uh, in my experience. So for me, timekeeping and is uh, the first step in being professional. So I answered in, in the sense that I would give them a warning based on what the company policy was. It could be a verbal warning, it could be a written warning. And uh, yes, so that would how that would how my conversation go with that person. But there was a follow-up question to that as well. Uh, let's say the person uh, listens to you, agrees to not do the same uh, actions again, but does the same actions again after a couple of weeks. So what would you do? Uh, I believe I did answer that question by saying, then for me as a manager, that person is setting a wrong example in the workplace and not like him or her in, in that position. So it could either be a suspension or it could be a termination based on the policy that the company follows. And that's how I answered it. Uh, I believe it was the right answer because I did get the job offer after that. <laughs> that's, well, that's good to hear. And at the end of the day, that's your result. You are a new comer to Canada with a job offer in hand before you land. So that's amazing. And... Uh, I got to ask Vinil, so, you know, going, coming back to what you learned from Zero to Hide, what do you believe is, were the key takeaways from what you read that applied to your real life scenario of, of doing what, of accomplishing what you have? See, I know personally a lot of immigrants who just, who just land up in Canada and, you know, expect to be, uh, well, it doesn't work that way. There's a lot of preparation and a lot of hard work which uh, immigrant needs to put in. Uh, to get the job. And I got a lot of points on what preparation to do from zero to high. Uh, start right from approaching a job search, which industry to look at, since there are a lot of people like me who have experience in two kinds of industries or two subsectors of the same industry. You need to pick and choose your battle. You know, you will not be able to machine gun your resume to every company and expect a response. Uh, key takeaways would be something like tailoring your resume for every job offer uh, and your cover letter. Cover letter is something that no Indian employer expects and no Indian employee has ever written a cover letter or, it, or in any case, it would be very rare. So the whole concept of cover letter was, uh, I learned about it when I did uh, research and I found there's a whole topic on cover letters in zero to five uh, on how to write a, an outstanding cover letter. The only job of a cover letter is to get that particular hiring manager to look at your resume. Uh, other, other tools like uh, I didn't know about job scan, but I did get to know about job scan from, from zero to hire. And it helped me a lot to tailor my resume uh, to get past the uh, the automatic systems, which is basically uh, track your resume in, in a job site. And it basically sees the fit of your resume to the job. So I didn't know about job scan until I read the book on, on Zero. And, uh, most important takeaway for me was uh, actually how to use LinkedIn in your job search uh, and not just carpet bomb your resume in, in every website. How to use LinkedIn to network with people, how to approach people uh, and use them as part of your job search. You cannot just ask somebody for a job. Why would somebody give you a job? Uh, unless you have contributed something to that particular uh, person on LinkedIn. So I think that was the most important takeaway for me on how to network and with people on LinkedIn and contribute to their success so that they help you out. So yeah. Vinil, congratulations. 
on your move to Canada, first of all, and secondly, on the fact that you will be arriving and going to work on Monday. That is really amazing. And um, I want to really thank you from the bottom of my heart for applying Zero to High strategies so effectively and for, sh for taking the time out to, to share it with our audience. So I want to ask you, uh, what's next in the life of Binil Chandran when you come out here to Canada? You had mentioned that uh, you have a passion for the automobile industry. Is that something that you're looking forward to? Well, absolutely. Initially, uh, I guess I would just need to settle into life into, in Canada because all said and done, it's, it's a completely different Canada, a completely different country and a completely different life for me. Uh, but yes, I have a few long-term goals. I, I want to uh, drive across Canada, all, all provinces. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Canadians wouldn't know what the, the different provinces look like. And uh, I intend to do that, which, which also helps me in my, uh, uh, in my interest of the great outdoors of Canada. Of course, I want to do that in the summer, not, not during the winter. <laughs> Yes, I, I heard it gets pretty cold in, in the other provinces. Um, someone told me they've experienced minus 58 in Saskatchewan. So, yes, that's a good plan to try and do it in the summer. <laughs> All right, Vinod, thank you very much uh, for being a part of Zero to Hide and this podcast. Um, I hope to reach out to you once you land and settle in. And uh, to our audience, I hope you got a great value out of what Vinil has shared with us. We apologize that the audio wasn't as good as we'd like it to be, but Vinil is reaching us out to us all the way from India and Mumbai, so uh, that's to be expected. I hope you still got some great value out of it. So thank you very much, Vinil, for sharing and for being a part of our show. And folks, we'll catch you next time on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Zero to Hired podcast. Make sure you check out our website, www.zerotohired.com and download your free resume template that's proven to get results, complete with examples and guidelines. Make sure you tune in as we interview leading industry experts who provide tips and strategies to help you get the career that's right for you.